To finish off our discussion of the multi-step synthesis of structurally complex benzenes, in this video I want to look in great detail at the synthesis of a tri-substituted benzene from benzene itself, which presents really a, a web, kind of a network of synthetic possibilities. And we're going to whittle down this network to a single ideal path through chemical space, starting from our target initially and working backwards to benzene in a retro synthetic way, thinking backwards, and then generating the synthetic scheme in the forward direction, always thinking about those forward reactions to make sure that they have, for example, the right regioselectivity, directing effects are working in our favor, and we're not trying to, or we're not going to end up violating one of these limitations of electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions that we're now familiar with. All right, so we have this tri-substituted benzene, and we want to start from benzene, and retrosynthetic analysis really is the place to start. So just to take a look at the target here briefly, we have a nitro group and a bromine in a kind of 1-2 orientation, and para to the bromine and meta to the nitro group, we have this acyl substituent or this ketone substituent right here. So we've got three substituents on this tri-substituted benzene. So the first step backward could involve removal, disconnection is the, the term that's often used, of any of these three substituents. And let's entertain the idea of all three, just to be very robust, very careful here. So we could remove in the reverse direction the acyl substituent in the forward direction this would correspond to Friedel-Crafts acylation as the last step of the synthesis that's one option we could think about installing the nitro group last or disconnecting the nitro group first that would involve electrophilic nitration as the last step of the synthesis or we could imagine disconnecting the bromine substituent and thinking about electrophilic bromination as the last step of the synthesis. Only one of these three is going to work as desired, and if you want to, now's a good moment to pause the video and see if you can work out which of these three paths is ideal. Let's start with the disconnection of the acyl group. This is not going to work as advertised because this Nitrobenzene is a heavily deactivated aromatic compound, right? Very, very weak nucleophile because of the electron withdrawing nature of the nitro group and the bromine, which is going to deactivate the ring actually further, despite being an ortho para director. So you may be looking at this and going, hey, the acyl group is meta to the nitro and para to the bromine, so directing effects are working in our favor. But don't forget about these limitations. And the issue here really is one of reaction rate. The rate of reaction of this electron deficient, I mean, I, I would say electron destitute, literally electron destitute aromatic compound, the rate of reaction of that with um, an acelium ion is prohibitively slow under these reaction conditions. So that won't work. This leaves these other two possibilities. What about bromination, which is this pathway here? What about installing the bromine? In the last step. Here we will run into problems with directing effects, right? Treatment of this with Br2 and AlCl3. Now this is a very electron deficient ring and that's worth pointing out. It's a nitro group with a uh, carbonyl substituent in it. So very electron deficient ring, that's going to present problems, but the directing effects are also off, right? The, we're asking the nitro group to be an ortho para director and the carbonyl group to be an ortho para director, and neither is an ortho para director. If substitution occurred um, in this compound, if EAS occurred, it would be at this position, which is meta to both the nitro and the carbonyl substituents. So that's not going to work. That leaves us with nitration as kind of the default um, last step of the synthesis here, or the first disconnection. And this would work as advertised, right? This position where we want to install the nitro group right here is ortho to bromine, which is an ortho para director, and meta to the carbonyl group, which is a meta director. Fantastic. All right, where do we go from here? Well, now we're looking at this and going, okay, now I've got two choices, right? I could imagine brominating the acyl, the aromatic ketone, right? Uh, brominating the uh, phenyl carbonyl compound here, or I could imagine 
Friedel-Crafts acylation of bromobenzene is another option, right? So let's entertain both of those ideas. Well, what about bromination of the acylbenzene, this compound? Well, that's not going to work as advertised or as desired, right? We're asking this acyl group to be an orthopara director, but it's not. It's a meta director, right? So to the extent bromination occurs, we would end up with the bromine in the meta position with respect to the carbonyl group right here or right here rather than here where we want it to be. So that's not going to work because of issues with directing effects. The other option is to do Friedel-Crafts acylation of bromobenzene. And this will work as advertised thanks to the bromine being an ortho para director. So it will direct substitution to the position para to itself, which is exactly where we want that substituent in the target of this step. So that gets us back to bromobenzene, and now we're one step from benzene, right? We can brominate benzene, and so we know we can work bromobenzene backwards to benzene. Bromobenzene can be made from benzene, right? Keeping in mind this arrow reads as can be made from in the language of retrosynthesis. So our retrosynthesis is now complete, and we've found the ideal route from the starting material to the target, and it's this route that I'm circling right here. So at this point, we can kind of forget about everything outside of this blob, which are all unproductive synthetic roots, and draw a synthetic scheme based on our retrosynthetic plan. So let's do that now. We start with benzene, and the first step is bromination to give us bromobenzene, Br2, AlCl3, bromobenzene. Next up, we're going to do Friedel-Crafts acylation of bromobenzene with the acyl chloride here, ethanoil, uh, or rather propanoil chloride, I should say, in AlCl3. That gives us this compound here, and the para isomer is one of two isomers we could get out of this. The ortho and para are both um, produced in synthetically useful amounts. The next step here, the next and last step, is nitration of this disubstituted benzene, which is going to occur selectively, ortho to the ortho para director and meta to the meta director. So this is a reinforced position in the language of um, synthesis with EAS we've been using so far. So this reinforced position will react selectively and we'll get nitration at the desired position. There you go. So here we looked at all the possible branching possibilities for synthesis of this tri-substituted benzene. Benzene. As you get more effective and more comfortable with EAS reactions and, and functional group interchange reactions associated with substituents on benzenes, you'll start to more quickly and easily rule out these problematic reaction pathways. Noticing, for example, that this starting material does not have directing effects that are in our favor for getting to this product without actually even drawing it out, just by looking at the target and thinking mentally about the situation after disconnecting the bromine from the target. 